Hello, Wes. There you are. Hi. Is it working? It's working. How you doing? Jeff in Vegas. Really good. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for taking the time out to me to talk about your new film, Potato Dreams of America. Thanks for having me. I'm really happy. I tell you, that that was the most bizarre title until I saw the movie. Now it makes total sense. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, tell us the story of Potato. I understand it's based on true events. It's a true story. Yeah, it's uh, like I like to say 99% true story based on everything that's happened to me and my mom. Um, uh, it's basically about me growing up in the USSR, in the collapsing USSR in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, and then coming over to the United States, my mom became a mail order bride um, and married a very eccentric American man. And we moved to Seattle. Um, and it's been quite an adventure. <laughs> wow, so you grew up in Russia? Yeah. Okay, well, I should have started the interview. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My one year of Russian from many years ago in college. Uh, nice. <laughs> uh, well, it also, well, to potato being in Russia and uh, changes are happening in the Soviet Union to Russia in the movie. They're making that transition. Was it Perestroika? Is that what it was called? Perestroika, yeah. So you could just see that there was a limited amount of liberation happening in the movie too, during his lifetime, during Potato. Yeah, this was a really, really interesting time in Russia because um, it really briefly felt very, very hopeful. And then it kind of went downhill from there. <laughs> because what happened was, you know, we had communist Russia, then we had a, um, a coup happening um, where the communists tried to prevent the reforms that were happening. And then um, Yeltsin and his supporters overpowered the coup. And for a while we had, you know, we had a lot of freedom and um, economic freedom and religious freedom and freedom of speech and all that stuff. And so that didn't last very long, but, um, you know, in the film, there's that sort of short moment where it's happening. And it was just really thrilling to be in Russia at the time. Um, well, that did, did that happen for you that, you know, color TV is all the rage inside in the movie and pirate <laughs> American station. And that's one thing that I've heard about a lot of people in, in, in uh, you know, back in the day, you know, Eastern European countries and all of that uh, was that we exported our culture that so many people wanted to see American movies and American TV shows. Was that the situation when you were growing up? Yeah, I mean, American films were everything. So we had, um, we had a pirated uh, um, sort of secret renegade channel that I don't know who broadcasted, but it was basically American pirated American movies late at night. And you logged in, you know, you not logged in back then, you had the dial. <laughs> you, know, you turned your dial to three and you, you never knew what was going on. The first movie I saw that way was Ghost and I was just instantly in love with Whoopi Goldberg and America's cinema and you know they would show all kinds of random movies from classic movies to really obscure B movies. <laughs> I love how Potato finds religion in the film and he learns the facts of life from God of all people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a, there's a character of Jesus in the film and I think yeah, for me, um, Christianity was kind of, I, for a lot of when you're a kid a spiritual kid you know kids have this really uh, intense relationship with you know whatever their faith is because they take everything so literally and um, you know they're not as cynical as adults so um, potato's best friend is Jesus basically but it's not real Jesus it's like a little kid's idea of what Jesus would be like <laughs> it was your version of Jojo Rabbit <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I wrote it a long time before Jordan Rabbit, but yeah, it definitely, I can see people seeing that parallel for sure. I, I love the visuals in this movie. Uh, it, it many times it feels like a play, especially like the bus ride when you showed the visual like that. It just looked like 
it was it was it was kind of mind bending. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm really inspired by theater. I I have background in visual arts and theater, and um, I loved you know in Russian parts especially kind of embracing the fact that it's it's a constructed reality. It's not like I'm not trying to sell reality to you. It's a it's me telling a story. Which I'm not a show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And finally today, uh, Wes, tell me about getting into South by Southwest. How's that feel? It feels amazing. It's such an honor. You know, it's such an amazing festival. Uh, we, I was lucky to be there with a short documentary a few years ago, and we won a jury prize. But it was a physical festival back then, and I was just blown away by how, you know, it's just such a giant sprawling festival, and yet it's so well organized. And all of the filmmakers, even shorts filmmakers, are treated like they're the only person there and you just feel so included. And um, so, yeah, I really appreciate that they were able to put together festival, virtual festival this year, because, you know, I can imagine that's such a challenge and they're kind of creating a new way of being a festival as they go. <laughs> so. Well, congratulations, you know, uh, I wish you all the luck at South by Southwest and uh, Spasiba for talking to me today. And, Thank you so much. Come visit us in Las Vegas sometime. We'd love to have you. I love Vegas. Yes, I will. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Wes. Good luck at the festival. <laughs>